We're here in this 2019 Blazer, and it's a loaded Blazer. It's a premium package, like I've seen in the Suburbans. Pretty cool, a premium all-wheel drive. You hear that engine, that V6? It's taken off, what are we up to, 6,000 RPM? These red lines is almost 7,000. V6, now this has a 9-speed automatic. Now GM, they love all these different gears. They have 10 speeds, 9 speeds, 8 speeds, 6 speeds. How many yeah. speeds do they need? But this is nice. I mean, you know, I'm not sure why they didn't just go with a 10 speed or, or you know, go with an 8 speed, but they thought the shit, the uh, 9 speed was the one that works the best, and that's fine. There's a lot of European cars that have 9 speeds or 7 speeds. It is interesting because it's not a CVT. But this little puppy, when it's wrapped up, it takes off. It's really well. It's got a sport mode, a trader toy mode. I really give it kudos for that. Even though it's not a brake controller, we're pulling a trader and it's under 3,000, so we're not breaking the law there. Mr. Trek here with another exciting trailer accessory review. This one's for your gooseneck trailer. It's from Gen Y Hitches. It's called the Cushion Surge Coupler. Torsion Flex. So it's kind of like a torsion axle on a, on a tra horse trailer. And that, inside here are those torsions. And so, as this thing flexes, those will move up and down. Gen Y hitches. All you have to do is look at them. They're built like a bulldozer. It's all heavy-duty plate metal. Make them adjustable hitches, pencil hitches, shock-absorbing hitches with torsion, like a torsion axle on a horse trailer. These things will last you forever. You cannot find a better built adjustable hitch. But this has different modes. It's, you can go all-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, and sport mode, which is fast, and then you got the uh, off-road mode, slippery mode, whatever, and then the tow haul mode. Well, the layout is pretty cool in this Blazer 2019. Right now, average on the highway, according to the computer, I'm getting 23.2. We are going to put a trailer on this, but I do like the layout. I like where everything's at. And then, of course, you have this mode button. Now, if I turn this puppy this way, it goes into all-wheel drive and tow mode. Tow haul mode is in all-wheel drive. You can see that lit up. So, twist it one more time. Now it's going into two-wheel drive. And it tells you that for a second in the dash. And then, move it up one more. And that's four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive. And we got a picture of that. And then, looks like sport mode. Turn it one more time. And you get the checkered flag. Yep, sport mode is on. And then, looks like a slippery slope. We'll twist it over there. Yep, off-road mode. Holy cow! And then, of course, we can go clear around the dial and go to tow haul mode. Tow haul mode is on. Pretty cool. Comfortable, you know, crossovers. These all-wheel drive crossovers are great. You know, Colorado with the snow we get once in a while, and the rain and all that. And you can go a little bit off-roading with them. But they set so much like a truck. It's what they feel like to me. Your seat is up a little higher than what it is in a car. Cars you're kind of laid down in. And this puppy you set in very similar to a truck. Maybe just a little bit lower than some trucks. But that's why they're so popular because the seating is better. It's easier to get in and out of them. They set up a little higher in traffic, which is good. You know, I very seldom have an accident. My wife used to have an accident about every other year in her car. And I'm sure some of that was because it was so low to the ground. The big truckers and all that didn't always see her. Where me and a pickup truck, I'm way up in the air and they always see me. But yeah, nine speed automatic in this thing. The thing about GM and their automatics, they have a 10 speed. I'm not sure why they don't use 10 speeds and everything, but they use a 10 speed. They use a 9 speed like this Blazer has, and they have an 8 speed 
and a six speed and on and on it goes but yes indeed we got a nine speed we're going to try this out in the hills so it's pretty cool i like the interior i like these round the discs for the uh the airflow they look cool speaking of cool stuff we finally figured this out i wanted the button to turn the heat up or down now look at that you see the arrows that means you rotate this thing the whole thing moves and when it does that your temperature changes man this is just too cool i think that's awful neat that I discovered at the end of the trip but that's cool <laughs> Instead of having to go through the streams that I was complaining about, you don't. You just twirl this thing. That makes that's a lot. Good job, Chevy. Just follow the arrows. The middle one, the middle one yeah, door. opens and closes how much air goes through it. But that is awesome. I am impressed. Yeah, I guess if I look at enough arrows, I'll know how these work. Cool. Good looking truck. I mean, this has got that Camaro squint. Now, this will it's just set to tow up to 4,500 if it's equipped right, and I cannot find exactly how much this one's rated at. The low end was like 1,500. But the trailer we have on here, which is my ATV trailer, and it has a side-by-side -side Honda Pioneer 500. So we are only, and I did weigh this puppy, let's see which notebook I put that on. I put it on this one. So this trailer loaded only weighs 2940 with this Pioneer. And this thing could be rated as high as 45 or could be as low as 40 but it's 15. So I'm going to guess this is closer to 3 because I couldn't find the exact number anywhere. I guess I could probably find in the owner's manual. That's a good place to look. Yeah, now that you figured out the mailbox. Yeah, now that I figured out the mailbox, but so we know so much about this. It's a lot of cool buttons, you know. This has got the buttons for the hatch. You can adjust how much open the hatch is. We've got some stuff back there. It's really, you know, it's, it's like all crossovers. It's very usable. And it sets up, excuse me, higher than a car, which I like to set up higher. It's just set up that way. Anyway, it's a rainy day. We're heading out toward Fort Morgan on I-76. Pulling this trailer. And we've got my youngest son, Eric. He's driving. He's going to be driving cars along with David, my other son, and Kelsey. We've got his family. James over there. She's 10. Uh, anyway, Dina's in the back. She's just hiding from me. She likes to hide from my cameras. But anyway, um, I like the looks of this. You know, it's got that Roy Rogers squinty eye and the headlights. That's what I call me. This looks a lot like the new Camaros. That's the new Silverados. The little squinty headlight across the top there. I mean, it looks, looks, looks kind of cool. I like it. It's a Roy Rogers eyeballs. That's what they are. But uh, anyway... The back, the front seat's fine. We got all kinds of room. It's got that giant panoramic moonroof. But you know what? Are you five two? How tall are you? Five one. And she does not have a hell of a lot of headroom. So like, obviously that back seat's not made for big adults. It's made for youngsters. But uh, how's the handling on this? This is front wheel drive, all wheel drive, and we have a two wheel drive now. Yeah, that's good. We can tell you how to trailer. there. Cool. Guys, that room back there? Yeah. Okay, here yeah. we go. Flying down the highway. That we're all the way up to 9.2. Coasting in before morning. But the uh, right now we are towing 2,900. 2,940. 2,940. This low trail ATV trailer and the Honda Pioneer side by side. And this actual vehicle, with just me in it, weighs 4620. You know, it has all these other numbers for curb weight. This is the premium. This is one loaded puppy, 9 speed automatic, 3.6 V6, which has 308 horsepower, 270 pound feet of torque. 5,000 RPM, which, you know, we're used to diesel RPMs at 2,000, but this is what a gas engine does. It's, it, it's almost wide open, 6,700 RPMs for the engine for maximum horsepower. So these do rev up quite a bit, and, uh, you know, the 9 speed sure helps you on fuel mileage, and also it's a 349 rear end axle ratio. 
So, I mean, it, it, I think it tows 3,000 pounds very well. You put this in sport mode, it flat out flies. In tow haul mode, of course, I raise the RPM and send the gear along with you shifting between gears. But that works at your lower speeds. It's 70 miles an hour above, all that goes away. So, just like normal, it does not raise the RPMs. But also, when this goes into tow haul mode, when you put it in there and you dial all your different modes, it also puts in all wheel drives for using the whole vehicle to motivate you, which is good. But so there's, yeah, there's the only thing that weighs 4260, but it weighs a lot more than that. But real life, one person in, a tank of gas. Love this 21 inch wheel, man. I feel like singing a rap song. Drive 21 inch wheels. But anyway, you know, the back has an adjustable seat, an adjustable forward and back. It gets a little low, but it just seems lower than it is. In front, we can lower the seats if we can go ahead and do it. I like it up high. My son's tall, what are you, six long? How tall are you? Six, six foot. So, he likes to set the seats down, lay back and do that. What's up? What's up? <laughs> <coughs> anyway, we're heading up for Morgan Line 76. And it's a comfortable, you know, this has got, of course, we're running higher RPMs, over 4,000. So you've got that. You got a little bit of road noise. It's raining. The rain's bouncing off of the vehicle, bouncing off the ground, up into the vehicle. So that's normal to have more noise. We're certainly getting that. But it's a comfortable ride. We just went through some really rough cement on the interstate. And I didn't even feel it, did you? Place where it just shakes your crap out of the truck. Yeah, 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 this is an all wheel drive. This is what we need to get something better. Fuel mileage like this is actually this puppy is rated at 25 on the highway. That's, you know, that's better than most pickups. 18 in the city and 21 combined. MSRP on this puppy is 45,600. So that's reasonable for the premium for the, the top of the line with all the toys it has. I love the air vents on this. They look so cool. But, uh, yeah, it's have no problem at all pulling here with 3,000 pounds. But I've got plenty of room. A lot of these, the center console is too big and your thing is always leaning against it like a lot of mobile issues I've been in. You're all spread out all over the place like you're in a lazy boy recliner. <laughs> Pretty comfy. Well, that's good. Oh, I can smell corn organ. Is that what that is? Yep, that's sulfur. That's off the beet plant, sugar beets. They can make, you know, gas out of that stuff. Methane or whatever. So, yeah, corn organ's got some peculiar smells. The beet plant, the beef plant, the cheese plant. So, lots of dairies and feedlots. Uh, the Walmart one, it's a couple. This is the one past, this is Main Street. But anyway, so what do you think of this bad boy? You gals comfortable back there? All kinds of leg room now. Wow. That's what you want, you want leg room. And there's our driver. He's all slumped down like he's a big basketball player. <laughs> cool. Hey, look at the raindrops. Keep falling. Big heavy rain. I do like this dash. I like this 8 inch screen. That's great for backup camera. <laughs> yes. Console comes with all these goodies. Yeah, that's cool, and I like all these little buttons here. A lot of things to move. Pretty cool. Now that mirror, it's a normal mirror for a crossover. Now the EPA does say that this is classified as an SUV. I guess I'll have to look through the manual and see what the classification on a crossover means differently. Maybe they just think everything's an SUV and there are no such things as crossovers. I'll have to ask the Environmental Protection Agency. What the heck are they talking about? Look at that, man. Two hands on the wheel. This guy's a regular professional driver. He's not even being distracted by all these guys with cameras. Oh, he's doing good. 
Well, we left Fort Morgan, we had some semi ruts and we were hydroplaning. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, I thought we already talked about that. Did we on camera? I don't know. Well, it's important yeah, to do so it on there, camera. Yeah, there's some big ruts right when we left town that were a little sketchy and down at like 60 miles an hour. But since then, I've been going about 75 ish. It's just hydroplanes a little bit. We switch lanes sometimes, but it's, it's pretty solid, really. Yeah, those big semi ruts, they gather full of water and you hydroplane and get, you gotta hang on to that steering wheel or you're hitting water. Yeah, I can see the road in the first one. I know, I know. Why is everybody passing you, son? We're going through Hudson. Oh, no. Everybody keeps passing you. What's going on? Look at that. that Holy cow, nice guys, upside down about. on the road. Yep, that's what hydroplaning does to you. If you're not hanging on, it will put you upside down. Okay. Wow, look at that. We got some sunlight now. I can actually see my camera. Oh, it's because we opened up the panoramic view. Isn't that cool? Man, it gives a lot of light and watch the raindrops. It's raining hard here at Fort Morgan. But yes, so now you just get to see our smiley faces. But, we're running about 4,000 RPM. It's like 75. Anyway, we're going to do our little trailer and ability to function the school or the trailers. And trailer control. I mean, it's tough on, on a small one. This is similar to a mid-sized truck. The track is narrowed by quite a bit in the trailer. So we're creating a you know, triangle middle with that, making the trailer look big. We don't even, we're not requiring that we just need to get under 3,000 pounds. That comes in at 5,000 pounds. The brakes comes in at 3,000 pounds. Requiring for these smaller trailers. But uh, anyway, you hear the raindrops are falling on my head. They keep falling. Um, so, we're trailering control because the fact it's narrower. I can't give it a high score, but I can give it 15. I can do that. I can give it 15. <laughs> Truck handling, which is also squat. This squat a bit I didn't measure. I'm sorry I should have done that. It looks like it squatted about an inch and a half. But it leveled up nicely, so I would not say it's extreme squatting. This is independent suspension. I usually squat more than leaps. <coughs> but, so, out of 20, truck handling is actually pretty good. What do you think? Uh, is it giving us some drift? Or, uh, I don't know. We hit some ruts there for the semi full of water, so we were uh, not hyperventilating, we were hyper, what is that called? Hydroplane. Hydroplane. We were hydroplane. And that's a little bit tough on the truck handling. So again, I'm going to have to go to 15. Not that it's a bad truck by any means. Reaching the controls. Of course, there is no brake controller to reach. So you lose a few points there. No brake controller. But anyway... I think the controls are relatively easy. You got the heated seats front and rear, which is nice. But you know me, I'm a big fan of knobs. I like to turn a knob. I don't want to have to sit there and bounce down the road trying to push a button. You know, just, that's my rhythm. Uh, so anyway, you know, and it's not. I'm gonna give it a 16. I don't think it's all that bad. And then the mirrors. Well, what can I say? It's a crossover, so they're, they're not gears made for trailers. They're made for cars, but actually, it's a, I'd say it's above average for a lot of the crossovers. Oh, there's an accident again. What in the world? The car dropped in the middle of the street. What are they doing out there? Out of the pasture. Anyway, that's kind of useful. But the mirrors, what can I say? I don't think it's great, but I'm going to go down to 15. Because that's what it is. I mean, this is not a real trader machine, but you do use these. Well, when you own one, you make a payment side. You're going to have to keep calling your four wheelers, your ATVs, your side by sides, your snowmobiles, your ski dudes, your smaller boats, all that stuff. When you pull with a rig like this, it's got the hitch, it's got a class, let's say a class four hitch, safety change and all that. Let's see if it tells us what the class rating is on the hitch. I do not see it. It looks it could be a class three or a class four, but at 4,500 pounds, that should be a class three. So, on meters, I'm going to just say 15 pounds. Yeah, 
acceleration of the trailer. And sport mode does really well. Of course, it's, you know, I'm going to say it's great shipping. It has tow haul mode. It may have great shipping. I haven't seen that anywhere. But acceleration of the trailer, I think, is good. I mean, you know, you can put it in sport mode and flat out fly. Yeah, that's right, right on a different one. Yeah, yeah so full drive, downward drive. Right. Right. I think the tow haul mode coming down the mountains may slow you down. But I, I think with the trailer, even in normal mode, with this V6, I think acceleration's good for a 3,000 pound trailer. Because so I'm going to shoot it right up there and give that an 18. So, now all i got to do is add the numbers up. Is that the hard part? That's the hard part. Actually, math was, I was fairly good at math. 79. That's what it is. Total score of 79, which I'm thinking for a crossover is pretty good. It's 79. Yes, indeed. I like this. I wish we could show more outside shots, but it's been raining cats and dogs the whole day we've been on this, and I really can't put a camera on the trailer like I normally do. I will figure something out. Maybe tomorrow I'll sneak up to the mountains, put a camera on it, and fly this for That's an idea, too. This is kind of odd. Of course, it has to do with speed. I'm up here now, and Estes pulling the same trailer we did yesterday. So we're, you know, not quite 3,000 pounds. And I'm up on the, I'm in the mountains, so I'm in high country, higher elevation, a lot of curves up and down the hills. And now I'm, according to the computer, I'm averaging 14.6 miles to the gallon, which is kind of strange because yesterday, you know, we had a hard time hitting nine. We got a little better than nine, but here I am. And now we're getting better fuel mileage. But that's dropping from, you know, 70, sometimes 75, clear down to, you know, an average of, say, 45. So that makes sense, but that's just kind of, it hits me strange because I'm probably another mile higher than every elevation and runs through a lot of curves and just by slowing down getting dramatically better fuel mileage pulling a trailer so anyway beautiful up here it's been snowing this is one wet may for us in colorado we got snow and rain every week but sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't this is one of those wet springs of course we need it since we have five rivers start here in colorado and in this 2000, in this 2019 Chevy Blazer, 3.6 V6, 9-speed automatic. I have it in tow haul mode. I'm coming down pretty good grades out of Estes. And barely can see it shift. Of course, in 9-speed, the gears are very close together, so there's not going to be a lot of RPM between gears. And I'm running down about 2,000 RPM. And if I break it, it'll jump up about 500 RPMs is all doesn't even jump a full thousand so it is great shifting either by pushing my foot on the brake or automatically sensing the altitude drop it uh, doesn't give me a lot of brake braking of course it's an SUV it's crossovers and it's not going really to set up like a truck the transmission calibration is different so coming down the mountain it's not really giving me a feeling of confidence. I'm down 1,600 RPMs. Hitting brakes on the curves jumps me up to only about 1,900 RPMs. I want more RPMs! <laughs> to really feel something, this thing needs to jump at least a thousand. There we go. Finally jumped up to almost 2,500 RPM. It's trying. May not be my first choice of a tow vehicle in the mountains. But there's a lot of other country in the United States that's not in the mountains. So, I still like the blazer. It's very quiet up here. The rain all day above. It's spring from the Rockies. We get rain. We get rain, especially every afternoon up in the, in the mountains themselves in the spring. That's why if you have no ACP or rain, you got to get up early. You get there early. But this is cool. I actually like this blazer. I just wish there was some part of it was identifiable with the old blazer. I don't know what it would take. Maybe some of those were pretty boxy. Later on, like the S10s, they had that rounded look to them. This
this has a super rounded look to it, so I'm sure I'll have to ask an engineer, see if there's part of this that uh, amplifies some of the heritage of the old blazer. Because I like the old blazer, I like the big blazer, and I really like the K10s, or the K5, this is the K5s. So I should have one of those. The old square body Chevys. I like them a lot. That's probably the year I would like to have some heritage preserved. Or if anything, these are closer to the later ones that were more rounded, rounded figures and all. But this is actually more comfortable than a truck. You know, it handles this like throwing a really rough cement part of the road down, and you just kind of feathering through it. Or a regular pickup, they spring, you're going to be bouncing down this road. So, anyway, you'll have to tell us what you think of this review of the 2019 Blazer. And I'm also going to get some pictures of the occupants of that second row seat. See, see the end back there? I can see a little bit of it. So we're going to see how <laughs> her and Dave fit back there. And I'm not going to have a camera on you yet, but I'll get one out. And we will punish you. Lately with GM, they uh, do this little round knob for the rear hatch. And it's like they let you open it a little or two quarters or more. I mean, you think you're what the deal with you, you want to open the hatch all the way. But it makes sense, especially with the trailer. Because if you're jacks in the way, you may only want to open it up two quarters so you don't hit the jack. Because I have been one of these SUV, big full size SUV hitting the trailer jack. So it's something you gotta watch. This one you can adjust it. You know, if you think of it, you can think of, hey, I got a trailer jack knocking in the way. I'll slip the little knob in the door and order. I think that's kind of cool. I don't know if anybody else doing that at GM. That way, you know, if your mother-in-law's out there getting worse and you don't hit her in the head with the with the hatchback, that'd be bad. So you just gotta hit her in the knees. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Boy, oh boy, that rain is loud. Anyway, the MSRP on this is $49,290. Almost $50,000. That's why it's called the Premier Blazer. So the Blazer comes in three personalities. Blazer, Blazer RS, and Blazer Premier. Now, I was looking up on here. Blazer Premier comes with the exterior brake chrome accents, the dual exhaust, and three facial chrome tips. Of course, we can do a few more things than that, but this also has the, of course, backup camera for the trailer. It's actually pretty easy to hook up. I can magnify it, look straight down, and, and the hitch, which I like that. And the rear seats, they're adjustable sliding which is really nice for the back row because they can be very close to the front seats. But via adjustment, you slide it back and get a lot of right here. So there's certain ways to make this fit all the adults. And we're fine in the front row, back row. Slide that seat back with the legs stretched out. Get comfy. It's all about being comfortable on the road.